Okay guys, we are up at Malibu and we are off to the next part. Let me get all my scrap apparatus ready. Yeah, we were in nonstop action, acting California cultural capital world. This morning now we're up here and it's so cold up here I need to tie two sweaters around my neck. Anyway, we're back on this KK150. I like the way the finish turned out a little bit. There's been a gap here. Uh, I think you all know what happened, but there's been a little gap. We put some sanding sealer on this and then did the touch up so we wouldn't lose it. And remember, the front of this thing was a little bit different because the binding was coming off when we pulled the back off. Um, the kerfing was fine and everything. So we're going to scrape the back now and there's a little bit different approach because we had the ability to put on the purfling then the binding now the binding is sticking up and i kind of want to show you a trick or two if you have ever been in one of those warehouse grocery stores where they got all the vegetables on racks instead of like your typical small grocery store you see these things that are waving like this and they let you in and they overlap so you don't get things in but they're in big long sheets so if you ever see one of those missing please don't make the tie in between fred or i and the fact that i'm going to show you something really cool right about here right about now i have my binding tools this is an old little couple cigar humidor and i've got a file i've got one of these that rotates a, 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 a sanding belt around some contraption i got a parachin um, guitar maker's knife and then i have the banding tool that's made out of a piece of banding and we're gonna see that here in a minute as soon as i find where I put it down but I cut this out of piece of that can you see it can you see me now anyway I just laid this around here where there is a radius drew it out and cut it out and then that way when I'm cutting this binding or shaping shaving this binding I can set this up on the radius and make sure that I don't scrape that new finish that I put on there, that fake finish. Also, this stuff bends so it will match the radius of the arch. Isn't that cool? Okay, here it is. Piece of banding. It's come up 48 inch box tree. Cut at an angle on a belt sander. And then you just tilt it slightly and put it on a whetstone and you'll get kind of a I forget what they call it um, a, 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 a burl a, a, something like that anyway once you've got that it works just like a scraper so we're going to take our little scrap apparatus here and we're going to put it up here we'll start here and then I'm just going to take this and I'm going to take my thumb and uh, give myself a depth gauge and you know what I'm going to move the camera a little bit closer so you can see something besides my beautimous face. So again we're going to set this down because I don't want to, I've got a ways to go here. You can see there's about four millimeters of binding to take off. So I'm just going to put this in here. Like so, and I'm going to arrange it where I can make quite a long run once I get going, but I'm sim simply going to do this. And you see, this comes off in pieces like that. And I'm just going to try to get as much of it as I can. Now, as I, as I go, what I really want to do is I just want to start doing long runs like this and once you get good at it you don't have to worry about it slipping but again the last thing you want to do is cut in to the finish you just got done and once you get the knack of it and you keep that edge on your scraper 
you're going to be fine. Now, one of the things you want to watch out for is keep this level. Don't tilt it back because then you get that rounded over binding. You want to keep this nice and crisp and keep this up kind of where it's flat. So every once in a while while you're doing your uh, binding, scraping, you're going to run across a little spot. You're going to come back in and do your touch up. You see that? Now if it's a little bit dark or it doesn't seem to want to fill, your brush is a little bit too wet. So you just come in and do a little bit of that here and there. There we go. Okay guys, I've got most of the stuff taken down, the binding scraped down to where the level it needs to be at with this. Now I'm taking the piece of tape and putting it on the razor blade and leaving enough of the razor blade sticking out where I can do the final scraping without touching the finish of the guitar. You see that right there? Just go along a little bit and scrape this down. Then we'll take a piece of thousand grit sandpaper and wet it and go along and smooth it out. Feels pretty good. Now, on some of these old guitars, everything doesn't always work out just right. We've got a little groove right there, a little separation. So, a little sanding block and a little toothpick and a little glue fix that right up. All right, guys, we've got the binding on and done. It's pretty smooth. The touch-up, there's a little bit to do. But now, we are going to put the neck on and... The way it all worked out, everything that was cracked, everything that was unlevel here, everything that broke away, all the kerfing worked out really well. And it appears that the neck angle is fine because we got this monster ruler here. I think, I think this was the envy of every Catholic nun who ever taught a school this thing weighs like 50 pounds this is a knuckle breaker but you just put it on here and I can put any kind of floating bridge I want. so we got the binding done we did a lot of touch up on this finish and it came time to put the neck on now I was fortunate because the neck had actually dried out and not broken loose over time um, when we were inside we re-glued everything the tone bars were in good shape, even though a piece of it had been cut out in the factory to uh, allow for the pickup to be mounted, but this body is in good shape now. When we put the neck on, everything lined up great. This way, um, the neck pulled down into where it's supposed to be. There's no gap. A little pass with some 400 grit. Got that just right. But the thing to remember here is since there is no truss rod, um, sometimes this neck angle, if it's not right this way, let's, let's, do, let's look at it this way. If your neck angle comes up a little bit, um, then you start having to put a lower and lower floating bridge up here and compensate that way. So, you always want to make sure that there's no gap in the body or the body's been adjusted where the back comes off because this much right here will affect your neck angle terribly. So let me show you a little trick here. I put a piece of this, uh, it's clear plastic or rubber curtain that you see in the produce departments is these huge warehouse stores where you walk through it and it's overlapped like this. This stuff is great if you can get a piece of it, but I use that to put between the body and the clamps and then I clamped everything down made sure everything was good this way everything was a tight fit and to make sure that the neck angle stayed down like this I took 
a couple of pieces of sash cord and once this was tight clamped uh, this down and then ran that sash cord noose into a motorcycle strap back here underneath the body it's padded back here and then it comes up to another I made a choker out of some more sash cord and then cinched this down with the motorcycle strap so in addition to being downward pressure here it also has that pressure keeping the neck here because the last thing you want is while this is glued up you don't want it relaxing up because that'll pitch your neck angle terribly I did use tight bond on this and not um, hide glue because it gets hot in California if the hide glue heats up I guess you could do a neck reset by just putting it in the refrigerator once you get things lined up but there it is I'm going to take this off and we can start putting all the scraparatus back on it okay guys the neck is on we're going to leave it sit for a couple days in an environment that's stable so we don't have high and low pressure fluctuations and let everything get settled into itself. So there's a couple things we're going to take care of during that time that aren't going to be stressful on the body of the guitar. So we know that the tone and volume pots were in this kidney shaped thing and like the binding it went south a long time ago. So what I've done is I've cut a couple pieces that match this you see and they sit there and they're heavy duty and I'm going to do everything I can to try to make these colors go together. In fact I think I'll make one that's kind of themed odd like junk pile and then the person can figure out what they want to do. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take some doweling and I drill these holes out uniformly and we are going to take some glue and we are going to glue these in and while we have access we're going to push up and make sure that everything is level uh, with the holes being patched inside the guitar and flush up here that way we've got new wood to drill into wherever we go see that All right, there they are. Once we let those dry up, we're going to put a piece of tape and then we're going to take a flush cut saw and get those down to where they need to be. Okay, this is going to be a cool part. You remember that when we were doing the touch up with the paint and everything, once that was done, we put um, some sanding sealer on it but that's not the finish. We are actually going to use something that I've made you familiar with called lac. So, and Okay, guys. You will remember that when we were touching up all of the finish here, that once we were done with that torturous process which is actually relaxing and enjoyable like I ever know what that is but I've talked to you about French polishing where you have a, a piece of linen inside of a piece of wool with some cotton and you soak it with the secret lac pad finish and then you wipe a coat on and then subsequently when that dries you're going to go on and put numerous coats on with that polish right there. But what I'm going to do to start this is I'm going to take a white ball 80 rag and I'm going to put some of this stuff on here and then I am just going to quickly wipe it on like this. We're not going to, because it will try to stick to itself right away. And you, once you go over it once, you want to let it dry fully before you go over it again. So we're going to wipe with the grain. 
most of that up there is going to be covered up but you will not believe what this stuff looks like when we're done so again you just take the lac pad finish solution and wipe immediately this stuff is a spirit based finish so it will try to vapor off and you just let it dry so we're going to go over the whole thing now that is crazy I have an alarm that goes off every week at the time Tam passed on a Wednesday All right. Okay, so once I get this done on the front, we're going to do the sides and the back, and then we are going to leave this thing sit for a little bit. So when you're doing this, you're not trying to rub, you're just making a pass like this because you don't want to take off everything you've put on so just a, a quick pass and like I said it will try to stick to itself and you don't want that I think you can see the back here and when you're doing this for real with the French polishing pad you'll find it out that you can do three or four coats a day and this is how they used to do violins it would build up really thick and it will protect everything there we go all right it is a little bit later again we're going to give us a couple days to dry I've got some detail work to hear like some of that celluloid was here I got to replace this little part here but when this is dry you take your lac pad and you recharge it with the lac polish and you come on this way I've got videos of this you don't plop down in the middle and leave marks but you come off and on the instrument and you just keep doing this in small circles and then there's some light sanding and some things like that there's a touch to this that you'll be able to feel because this stuff vaporizes off very quickly and it will start to stick to itself so you do not want to plop on and off in the middle of the guitar so when you get to the edge you just come off like that and then after numerous numerous coats again you just yeah I know I should be wearing rubber gloves yeah Michael Jackson school of French polishing my trusty old cobalt blue Vicks bottle with an antique diversion of chick flick teal. Yeah. Whatever, I needed to be French polished because I'm antiquitarian myself. Anyway, guys, important thing here. The neck is set. It's glued. We're going to leave it sit. And we're going to get to work on putting this thing back together and we'll catch that in the next episode catch the playlist right up there right about now and I'll tell you what this thing is starting to look like something not sure what but something like subscribe and all the other cliche things everyone tells you to do on YouTube when you complete those I've got a cliff and a bridge for you to do something with